Kansas Information Network News. I'm Karen Johnson. A Derby man is ordered to pay a hefty fine for practicing law without a license. The Sedgwick County DA's office said Thursday that Andrew Wells entered into a consent judgment ordering him to pay $60,000 in fines. Wells was accused of accepting work from a local woman in a payment dispute with the Social Security Administration. The DA's office said Wells charged the woman $2,000 for the services, but never performed any service for her. He's also never been a licensed attorney in Kansas. I'm Jared Sorello. A man who officials say worked for one of North Korea's military intelligence agencies been indicted for his alleged involvement in a conspiracy to hack American health care providers, according to federal prosecutors. A jury in Kansas City, Kansas, indicted Rim Young Hayok. This is Kansas Information Network News. We all make promises, big and small, tested over time and distance tried by circumstances and decisions. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I do solemnly swear to bear true faith and allegiance. To help you when you're in need. To tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. To be considerate and caring, courageous and strong. For better. For worse in sickness and in health. To love and cherish. To be your loving, faithful friend. Partner. Child. Parent. Neighbor. One of our most important commitments is to support our nation's veterans. Learn how you can help a veteran going through a difficult time by visiting maketheconnection.net. Good afternoon, I'm Natalie Hadley with your KQNK News. Brought to you by the Norton County Hospital, providing the best care right here at home. Governor Kelly has sent a letter to FEMA asking for an extension to submit a request for a major disaster. The letter asks for an extension to October 5, 2024 to submit to the Public Assistance Program for severe thunderstorms that impacted the state June 26 through July 7, accompanied by large hail, damaging straight-line winds, tornadoes, and torrential rainfall resulting in flooding. Governor Kelly made the request to allow for more time to conduct preliminary damage assessments with FEMA, as well as time to review the assessment data and request a major disaster declaration for the Public Assistance Program, which is the program that provides funds on a cost-share basis to repair damaged public infrastructure such as roads and bridges. Governor Kelly said as severe storms continue to impact Kansans, stretching state and local resources thin, additional time is needed to collect data and validate all expenses to aid local governments in restoring the infrastructure vital to the safety and well-being of their communities. Finding something or someone in murky water should be easier for Kansas Wildlife and Parks officials because the department recently got two remotely operated underwater vehicles that can search with sonar. Wildlife and Parks game wardens were training with one of the remotely operated underwater vehicles at El Dorado Lake on Wednesday using the remotely operated underwater vehicles to find a mesh box live trap placed in the water for the training session, and it worked. The remotely operated underwater vehicle has a camera, lights, and a mechanical arm, in addition to sonar, and the Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks said the new technology will greatly aid and enhance underwater searches. The game warden said the remotely operated underwater vehicle system helped with the recovery in May. The Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks plans to keep one available in the eastern half of the state and the other in the western half. As of Monday, July 22nd, law enforcement agencies across the state have been looking for excessive speeders and this will run through August 11th. During this period, motorists can expect increased safety messaging and increased speeding enforcement to urge drivers to obey posted speed limits and help reduce crashes and fatalities. Law enforcement agencies and the Kansas Department of Transportation will also increase their messaging about speeding on signs around the state. This statewide speeding campaign called Speeding Rex Lives comes after the Kansas Highway Patrol pushed lawmakers for stricter penalties for excessive speeding earlier this year. The campaign emphasizes that speeding is not only financially costly, but it can also ruin lives. According to the Kansas Department of Transportation, 
The chance of death or serious injury doubles for every 10 miles per hour over 50 miles per hour of vehicle travels. And speeding is a factor in almost one-third of all traffic fatalities nationwide. In 2023, 79 people lost their lives in speed-related crashes in Kansas, a reduction from 2022. However, 2,085 people were seriously injured in speed-related crashes in 2023, an increase from the previous year. I'll be back with more in just a moment. As farmers gear up to harvest the crops we all depend on, Norton County Hospital and Clinics reminds you to harvest safe and drive smart. As you hit the roads, be patient and stay alert around farm vehicles. Expect slow-moving equipment with limited visibility. Keep a safe distance, wait for them to pull over, and never pass in no-passing zones. Farmers, ensure you're visible and aware of your surroundings. Let's share the road and ensure a safe harvest for all. The Waukini Police Department is asking for information about vandalism that's taking place at the Bryant Motel located at 219 Barclay Avenue, as the Waukini Police Department has reported that while the owner has been doing renovations, vandals have been shooting windows with BB guns, causing significant damage. The Waukini Police Department stated in a post on social media that so far, two windows have been broken, costing $500 per window to replace. And if it continues, the cost will escalate, potentially leading to felony charges for criminal damage. They said if you think this behavior is amusing, remember it could lead to serious consequences, including the loss of freedom and financial penalties. Anyone with any information is asked to please come forward, and you can contact the Waukini Police Department by calling 785-743-5711 or emailing M. Romero at joaquinipd.org. You can remain anonymous. The community is reminded that water restrictions begin on Monday, May 27th and will run through Labor Day. The restrictions and rules that apply include that there is no watering between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. on any day, people with home addresses ending in odd numbers can water on odd-numbered calendar days, and people with home addresses ending in even numbers can water on even-numbered calendar days. Hand watering with a closable hose connection can be done on all days for potted plants, although there is still no watering between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. There are no restrictions for certain businesses that include car washes and businesses that sell outdoor plants, shrubs, and trees. Should people or businesses desire a schedule for watering other than the odd-even schedule, such as Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they need to make an application to the city office who will provide approval when the plan is reasonable and furthers the interest of water conservation practices. For those that have planted new grass or sod, a special permit is allowed but must be applied for at the city office, and an exemption may be made for daily watering, though there's still no watering between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Any violation of the restrictions or excessive water runoff on your designated day could result in a violation assessment of $25 a day. You can read the full executive order on the Norton City website at cityofnorton.com. The Kansas Department of Transportation began a resurfacing project on a portion of U.S. 283 in Trigo County on Monday, July 22nd. The project work involves an application of an ultra-thin bonded asphalt surface on 22 miles of pavement, starting at the Ness County line and extending north to the I-70 U.S. 283 interchange near Waukini. Traffic through the areas where crews are actively working will be directed by flaggers and a pilot car, and motorists should plan for delays of up to 15 minutes or less during the daylight hours. The Kansas Department of Transportation expects this work to be completed by the end of August, conditions permitting. Eunice L. Neeltop, 102, passed away on July 22nd at the Amby Home in Norton. A funeral service is planned for tomorrow, Saturday, July 27th, at the Plummer Gobber Funeral Home in Norton at 10.30 a.m., and an interment will follow the service in the Norton Cemetery. Visitation will be held at the funeral home today, Friday, July 26th, from 5 to 7 p.m., with family present to greet friends. Memorials are suggested to the American Legion Auxiliary Post 63 or the Methodist Women, and memorials may be sent in care of Plummer Gobber Funeral Home 215 West Main Street in Norton. Words of comfort and condolences may be left at plumbergobber.com. 
I'm Natalie Hadley. Your KQNK News was brought to you by the Norton County Hospital. You can call the Norton County Hospital at 785-877-3351 for all of your health care needs. Kansas Agriculture Network News. Good day, everyone. I'm Greg Akagi. USDA's latest food price forecast should be good news for shoppers. Gary Crawford has the numbers. Analysts at the Agriculture Department are projecting that food at the grocery store this year will likely cost us more than last year, but only about 1% more. And that's compared to a 5% increase in prices that we saw for groceries in 2023. USDA economist Megan Schweitzer told us even though we are only a bit more than halfway through this year... I don't expect too much change in the forecast through the remainder of the year. We've sort of narrowed in on on this right around 1% predicted change in prices. Um, It's been the same for the past two months. And while overall grocery prices are expected to rise, some food categories will cost less than last year. Fresh fruit almost 1% less. And then a few other categories where we're predicting price declines in 2024. Fish and seafood by 0.8%. Eggs by 0.3 percent. Milk and dairy by almost half a percent. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol announced its continuing program expansion for the fifth consecutive year, both in enrolled growers and planted acres. Planted cotton acres enrolled increased 2.1 million acres, up 31 percent from 2023, and is driven by a 35 percent increase in enrolled growers demonstrating a strong commitment to sustainability in the cotton industry. Darren Abney, U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol Executive Director, says they're proud to see a steady increase in grower enrollment for the Trust Protocol for that fifth consecutive year. He said it's a collective effort that brings more responsibility to produce cotton into the market. You're listening to Agriculture News here on the Kansas No young person should ever have to worry about having a safe place to sleep at night or a warm meal to eat or whether anyone cares about them. But the reality is one in 10 young adults will experience a form of homelessness this year. But the good news is there's an organization making a big difference. Covenant House. For over 50 years, Covenant House has been helping youth in crisis and giving them the support and the tools they need to succeed in life. I have no words to express how Covenant House changed my life. They just really genuinely just wanted to help me succeed, and I'm succeeding. When youth who are experiencing homelessness have a hot meal, a safe place to sleep, and love, most of all love, they can overcome heartbreaking challenges, and their lives are transformed. Covenant House is changing the lives of young people in cities across America. To learn more, go to covenanthouse.org today. Thank you for caring. Kansas Agriculture Network Weather. This is meteorologist Steve Hamilton for the Kansas Agriculture Network. Very warm temperatures for the next couple of days, and then we'll have a little bit of a heat wave coming up Sunday afternoon through about Thursday of next week. Statewide highs in the 100s and going as high as 105. In the meantime, we'll be at or slightly above average on the daytime highs today and tomorrow, but still pretty hot. Rain chances are low, but a few thunderstorms are possible tomorrow and again on Sunday. On the map, strong high pressure is covering the central plains and much of the western and southwestern U.S., but some moist air has gotten in underneath the high. Most of that will stay off to our west and south. Temperatures today over Kansas ranging from the low 90s in the eastern counties to the upper 90s in our western high plains. Can't rule out an isolated shower or thunderstorm this afternoon, but they'll be few and far between. Overnight, we're expecting clear skies, mild temperatures, lows mostly in the upper 60s and low 70s. We won't see much movement on that big high-pressure system, which will strengthen during the weekend. Temperatures will be up a few degrees on Saturday, and again, we have a chance of an isolated afternoon shower or thunderstorm. We're in about the same situation on Sunday, except the western and central counties will be quite a bit warmer. Afternoon highs in those areas getting into the 100s. Looks like we'll stay mostly in the 90s for eastern Kansas. Then next week, the whole state will be at or over 100, at least through Thursday. 
This afternoon in northwestern Kansas, mid-90s with mid to upper 60s for the overnight hours. Mid to upper 90s north central and tonight we're in the upper 60s. Northeast, low to mid 90s with upper 60s to about 70 for the overnight lows. Southwest, low to mid 90s and mid to upper 60s overnight. Mid 90s in the south central counties. Tonight we're looking at upper 60s. Southeast, low 90s for today, upper 60s and a few low 70s overnight. This is the Kansas Agriculture Network. Don't you wish your life came with a warning app? Stop. That dog does not want to be petted. (laughs) Just a little heads up before something bad happens. Move your coffee cup away from your computer. Oh, no, 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 no. So you can have more control. Stop. You're texting your boss by mistake. Uh Uh-oh. Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome. But pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes like managing your weight, getting active, stopping smoking, and eating healthier, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. It's easy to learn your risk. Take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Warning, the cap is loose on that catch-up. Don't wait. You have the power to change the outcome. Visit doihaveprediabetes.org today. That's doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its Pre-Diabetes Awareness Partners. 